I'm so excited that creatine is getting the big push that it is at the moment for health, especially when we start talking about brain health, heart health, gut health, and all of the perturbations that people have, especially women with heart and brain and gut. When we're looking at the reproductive years, a lot of women have issues with iron and iron absorption, and their ferritin is often on the low end of normal. When women are in their reproductive years and their ferritin sits below 50, we need to look at supplementing because we need to look at how iron is essential for so many different functions rather than just red blood cells. The other one is vitamin D3 because we spend a lot of time inside and if we're outside in the summer, sunscreen and hats and covering up is a big thing. And a lot of women are deficient in vitamin D3. So if we're looking at, let's increase that, then we also see how D3 is so essential for so many different functions in the body. The one change I would make for peri and postmenopause is omega-3 fatty acids. Because when we start seeing omega-3 and how it works on a cellular level to help with oxidative and inflammatory properties, peri and postmenopausal women need that boost in omega-3s. We see it's not as dire when we're in our reproductive years as it is when we start getting older. 